the X1 is both a crossover and a BMW. This combination hits right in the heart. True, sometimes the flight path of such a combination changes dramatically, hitting the heart, it hits the pocket and goes sideways. But still, the X1 is a kind of entrance ticket to the world of BMW. It is far from the most expensive car in the line, but the breed remains truly Bavarian. Therefore, it is not surprising that opinions about this car are very different. Someone splashes all his liquids with delight. Someone bit his nails to the elbow, considering why he got involved with this car and where he can get money for repairs now. And all points of view have the right to exist. The car is really ambiguous. The first generation BMW X1, just RE84, was released in the fall of 2009. Despite being built on the BMW 3 Series platform, the crossover has some chassis differences. There are slightly different suspensions and steering mechanism. The X1 has an electrohydraulic amplifier. The 3 ruble note has an electric one. But the base, floor panels, and much more are the same for these cars. The X1 could have a rear drive in the S-Drive version or a full drive in the X-Drive. The boxes and engines of the crossover were already familiar from the Troika and some other BMW cars. The X1 did not have manual transmissions. The crossover relied exclusively on automatics. It could be automatic transmission ZF6HP19, GM6L45E or 4L40E, depending on the type of drive and motor. 8-speed automatics appeared only in the next generation F48. The X1 had a hell of a bunch of motors. It's too long and meaningless to talk about each, so I'll just list them for fun. Gasoline N46, N46B20, N20, N52, N52B30, N55, and diesel N47, N47D20, N47TU, N47 Top, and N47D20T1. To be honest, none of these motors excites me. But we must pay tribute, some of them drive the car very provocatively for the first few tens of thousands of kilometers. Of course, the motors delight with all the branded buns BMW. There is also a variable valve timing system on the double vanos intake and exhaust camshafts, and a valvetronic two valve lift system, and a dis of variable length intake manifold. You should not be surprised at the large number of diametrically opposed reviews. The car is really not the easiest, and it is not always possible to guess its behavior. On the one hand, it goes well, on the other, it requires a lot of money. Well, the owners of Boomers are emotional people, so the reviews are often interesting, but unprintable. And both positive and negative. Something, but X1 knows how to evoke emotions. Hate number 5, Interior Materials. The owners of top trim levels, of course, are silent on this topic. Everything is beautiful, soundly, and a little chic. But those who at one time bought the X1 and simpler trim levels were disappointed in the cabin over time. Disappointed owners do not choose expressions, fabric G. Bad edition. The main reason to hate the interior fabric is the impossibility of cleaning it normally with great love to get stained, salon fabric. I have never seen anything like this, in the summer you put a misted bottle of water on the seat, stains remain. They are washed at the sink, the fabric on the seats is practical, but at the slightest hit on it, even ordinary water, stains immediately appear. There are many complaints about the plastic panels, a torpedo made of plastic, like on a 9. Well, or a little more non-parliamentary expressions, the disadvantage of this car is a fucking cheap plastic panel. Sometimes crickets appear and then disappear somewhere. However, in fairness it should be noted that there are no complaints about the rapid wear of interior materials. Yes, the fabric is not washed, the plastic is hard, but they retain their appearance for a long time. Love number 5, Brand To be honest, many chose the X1 not only because it is cheaper than the Audi Q3, but also because it is a BMW. Let small, but BMW. And absolutely correctly they say in the reviews that BMW is a breed. The way it is. Still, driving a B is more pleasant than Kosh K, and there is no getting away from it. 
and it doesn't matter that this is one of the most affordable models of the concern here in any case all bmw chips are present in the end there is no arguing about tastes yes but the bmw style is recognizable and i personally was pleased that even disappointed in the car people find something good in it and this is good it is the brand the only plus is the bmw badge on the hood hate number four tires run flat the x1 was stocked with run flat tires let me remind you that these are tires with reinforced sidewalls which allow you to drive with a puncture for a long time without putting on a spare tire seems good but not great why the one of the commentators described in detail i cannot ignore the creation of a gloomy german genius called the run flat tire of the pluses the ability to move on a tire with zero pressure there are many more minuses there is no spare tire or repair kit nervous behavior and ruts wild prices for the tires themselves about 20 to 30 percent higher than for regular ones in general everything is short and to the point almost all owners were happy to get rid of these tires and put on regular ones as they say i did it myself and advise others run flat g bad edition note and the trash right away factory run flat tires are very hard it is better to replace them with ordinary ones oh this emotion love number four dimensions many x1 owners consider it the ideal urban crossover of course it's better not to leave the road on it but driving around a snow-covered city in winter is just right but the main thing is very good dimensions x1 does not look like a defective stub but at the same time it fits perfectly into the cramped streets and courtyards the dimensions of the car are good for the city a small turning radius excellent visibility in all directions small width in general the reviews here are very similar ideal for the city in winter you can drive through the city snowdrifts when parking do not worry about the curbs the dimensions are comfortable not big and not small as needed in addition to the dimensions they often recall excellent maneuverability i don't know what they did with the suspension but in the yards it steers and turns around easier than the same focuses and corollas because my wife has to travel mostly from house to house she is delighted I am very happy for the wife of a man I do not know. Honestly. Hate number three, cramped cabin. I think this point after the previous one will not surprise anyone. The briskness of the X1 came out sideways to him in the size of the internal space. The car cannot be called spacious. If your height is from 180 and weight is 100, strong Russian man, the rear passengers will be uncomfortable. The trunk is small. The glove compartment, one might say, is only for branded instructions. It is important to note that there are very few complaints about the tightness of the front seats. Occasionally, however, they complain that it is not quite easy to get inside because of the shape of the doorway, but still there is usually enough space there. But in the back, I would still like more space. Therefore, X1 often disappoints those who bought it as a family car. Well, the reviews are appropriate. The back seat is to take colleagues to the restaurant maximum. Suitable only for children. And even then, if there is a child in a child seat behind, you have to move the front seat forward so that a person is placed no higher than 1.60 M. So, if you have basketball player children, pass by. I recall the lyrical hero of Max Pokrovsky's song, The Son Grew Up as a Basketball Player, and Ha Ha Ha, Harry Muscular, and Ha 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 no the berry did not grow for you love number three steering still some bmw technologies have earned the grateful beating of the hearts of the owners we are talking about the servotronic system which allows you to adjust the force on the steering wheel depending on the speed it works like this the feeling of heaviness in the steering wheel when turning on the spot but at the same time when driving along the highway on the contrary it gives a feeling of stability of the car on the line of motion and a clear response to turning the steering wheel to be honest i didn't quite understand this review just on the highway and during acceleration the effort increases apparently people understand this somehow in their own way well okay the main thing is that he likes it and not only to him 
during a sharp acceleration, the servotronic works, and the steering will become stone, and the machine begins to count gears with a whistle, turbines, the same servotronic behaves nicely when the wheels are in the mud, you can turn the steering wheel with your little finger. If it weren't for the constant repairs under the steering rack warranty, there would be no price for this servotronic. But he has a price, about which below. Hate number two, the number of small and not very breakdowns. For a long time, I doubted where to place this reason for hatred. And whether to put it at all? It seems that there are many reviews, the authors of which insist on a fairly high overall reliability. But if you dig a little deeper, you have to come to a sad conclusion, X1 knows how to wag nerves with its failures. Usually there are no breakdowns for the first thousand hundred kilometers, but someone may not be lucky even earlier. I would not say that the faults are major. Usually, no. But they are too common. Here, for example, a person shares his troubles, since the beginning of the year, I have already visited the service twice at 30 at a time, it began to rattle again, I made diagnostics for the second time this year, again 30,000 were counted. For 100,000 kilometers of run edition note, almost the entire chassis was moved. The lower section of the steering shaft disease, two repairs. Parktronics fly every two years, or about once every 20,000 kilometers, change the fan for 50,000 kilometers, sour brains. Once every 15,000 kilometers, something was changed in the suspension, inexpensive bushings, stabilizers, little things. The steering cart in is constantly breaking down, price 25,000 rubles. A bit too much, don't you think? And it is not surprising that many people are disappointed in the car, German quality, associated with the resource of individual components and assemblies, begins to alarm. Such a number of breakdowns, albeit small ones, makes you think primarily about the quality of components and, as a result, the overall reliability of the car. I note that the owners of X1, who do not complain about frequent breakdowns, also exist. But some unambiguous connection between the configurations, the place of assembly, and the frequency of breakdowns could not be found. Although the impression was that the owners of cars with diesel engines were a little more fortunate. Love number two, fuel consumption of diesel cars. No, no, no one complains about the high consumption of gasoline lighters. Everything is all right with them, but not more. But the consumption of diesel X1 is very pleasing to their owners. And with any diesel engine, I think words will be superfluous here. It's better to quote with numbers. Consumption of the city shows 9 liters all the time. The highway showed 1,000 to 20 kilometers on a full tank. I was surprised, but somewhere it happened this is with a calm ride. Very economical on the highway 5.3 liters of diesel fuel per hundred at a speed of 120 kilometers slash H. When driving on asphalt at speeds up to 100 km per hour, the consumption is 5.5 liters per 100 km, Veliki Novgorod, St. Petersburg. By the way, it is interesting that BMW owners are more pleased not with the small expense itself, but with the power reserve. Enthusiasm for him is very common. The tank is 60 liters, so the cruising range on the highway, according to the readings of the BC, is up to 1,000 km. It's really enough to get from Moscow to Minsk without refueling, and at the same time, about a quarter of a tank remains. What can I say? I envy. Hate number one, maintenance and repair cost. In principle, everything is expected here. The only thing that the owners of X1 comfort themselves with is the fact that X5 and X6 are even more expensive. Well, or the fact that, if you want to ride beautifully, you need to pay. And the point is not only in expensive repairs, and, as we have already found out, something does fall off from the X1 from time to time, but also in the high prices for routine maintenance. A few figures and facts. I spent 35 to 40,000 rubles a year on maintenance. Despite the fact that he drove no more than 10,000 kilometers a year. Let's be honest, not very budget. And with spare parts it turns out even more expensive, I changed the axle gearbox for 153,000 kilometers. The thing, I'll tell you, is not cheap, 105,000 rubles. 
and at 165,000 kilometers I changed the racks 32,000. What to do? As one of the owners philosophically noted, X1, like all BMWs, loves cabbage very much. And a lot of people are very upset about it. Especially those who bought a dead copy on the secondary market on the cheap. Love number one, manageability. I met reviews of several owners who moved to X1 from 3 rubles. And none of them complained that the crossover rides more boringly than the third series. Apparently, the designers managed to make a really incendiary crossover, you are the king on the road, frisky, nimble, holds the road perfectly, at a speed of 200 you can control with two fingers. I'll add a couple of such reviews for persuasiveness, excellent dynamics and handling, excellent road holding, excellent handling, stiff suspension, no rolls when cornering, brakes are on top. Everything would be just perfect if the vast majority of authors of such enthusiastic phrases would not throw out the factory run flat. Feedback is met with them, especially a lot about the disgusting behavior of the car in a rut. But we know that it's all about the tires. Therefore, we put corporate controllability in the first place of honor. If not for her, the meaning of buying X1 would be completely incomprehensible to me.